we're gonna do some strings today, ladies and gentlemen. So, what's a string? Okay. A reminder that we have four different types of variables in Python. What are they? Integers, floats, strings, and boolean. Okay. Are we copying you? We got all those things, right? Those are the four. We're focusing this page, right? We're talking about in this case lists. Lists and tuples are containers for different types of variables. So they're kind of you know. They're in, they are technically their own category, but the variables or values that are in them are still one of these four. Okay, bless you. So, let's talk about, in this case, some strings, okay? Now remember that we have the ability to store variables such as this. We can, for example, title a variable slogan and then say that the value of that slogan is my school is the best, okay? Whether that's true or not, it's up to you. But, there's our slogan. It's now stored as a string, okay? And if I type function that, it should return that it's a string. Okay? So that's nice and easy. Now I also can, of course, call that, and I can have it print just like that. Okay? I can even tell it, for example, in a, in a code to print it as well. Okay? So I can have those, those functions all executed based on that string. Now, question. When you, when you um, typed in slogan, mm -hmm. right? Uh huh. Yep. When I hit print, because print is only printing the value, it's not printing the so quote unquote variable. So in this case, if I want those quotes to show up, I'd have to manually put them in. Okay. There's a difference because I print. I use the print function. The print function's job is to return the value just as it is. Whereas in I, in the interpreter, if I just type the variable value, it will not only report the string. If it's a string, it'll put quotes around it. Sorry, the value I meant is what I meant. Okay. Now. With strings, and this is this is the kind of the hard part, okay? Strings are iterables, okay? Now you may you may forgot you may have forgotten. It's been a while, but an iterable is something that you basically can count through, okay? And what I mean by th that is this: if I want to say, for example, um, in the next section, if I'm going to make a loop, and I want to say, hey, let's loop through this name, okay? If there's four characters in the name. If there's four characters in the name, it's going to loop four times, okay? But that's different than saying, I can't, in Python, you'll see why when we get to loops, I can't say, hey, loop four times. I have to put something in to tell it how many to loop. I have to give it something to iterate through, okay? Strings can be iterated through. We can actually do things like the in function on strings. We can do, um, uh, like I said, loops before. We can do loops with them. But we also can splice. We can, we can get certain values out of that iterable from, from starting points to end points. And that's what this activity is going to kind of walk through. Okay? Now, the activity in this case is, of course, 135. If you haven't already uh, gotten that out, we can, we can, uh, you can do that. But um, I want to show you a couple of uh, problems, okay, and ways that we can do it. Now, if I type this slogan and I put brackets and I put a zero there and around it. What do you think the output's going to be? I'll remind you that the slogan's value is my school is the best. So what do you think I'm, what do you think is going to come out if I if I type this into my interpreter? Error. So I'm say error. Okay? Well, you have not you may not you may not know what we're doing at this point. So you may say no, whatever, but something other than error is going to come out. What is it? It's going to be M, not just M, but capital M. Okay. Oh, now let's see if you can figure that out. No see if you can oh, figure that oh, out. Wait, is it Go ahead. The first letter? Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, Amir said it too. Yeah. It's like the first character. The very first knowledge. character in the string. So our zeroth value is the starting character in the string. It's the first character. Okay. So that's sort of like, well, why isn't it one, right? right. Well, just the way computers work. That's okay. Wait. If you put okay. a slogan, zero and one. Cool. If I well, let's try it. Let's let's see what happens. I, I obviously can do this, right? I can type in another number, and I can get the fifth value. The fifth well, in this case, it's the it's the technically if I did slogan five, is that the fifth letter really? No. No, it's the what? Six. It's the sixth letter. But okay. So let's let's remind that. No. Our space is counted. Well, let's oh, see. We're doing this? Check it out. If that's H, if that's H, you're both. We're both. We're doing it both. M Y space S C H. Right. That's the sixth character. 
okay? So the slogan five, the slogan bracket five, okay, returns the sixth val string, or sorry, character in the string, okay? Just like slogan zero. So in other words, that zero is our starting point, okay? And you're gonna find that when you're iterating, especially when you're doing loops in the next, next activity, when you're iterating, you're going to have to start at zero, okay? This is gonna be, so in other words, you wanna go from zero to four, it's actually gonna loop five times, okay? So, but we'll get to that, we'll get to that. All right, now, what if I want, like what you said, what if, what if I want a, um, a range of values? What if I want it to show, like say for example, the second through the fifth characters, okay? What if I want that to happen? Well. The way I do that is I do this. I type zero through five, but we're using a colon to separate it. And when I do that, I get that output, okay? Now, is that what you may have thought what was gonna happen? What's different about that, the way this came out, versus what we typed when we was just slogan five? Um, Go ahead. I don't know if this is what you're looking for, but I noticed that it counts as space as a character. Yes, the space so is counted as a character. So it's oh. counting from the zero uh, character, which is M, all the way to the sixth character, which is C. The no. sixth character is not C. Not six. It's counting. It's actually counting to the fifth character, which is C. Yeah. But it's not counting the sixth character. So in other words, we're we're giving it when we go from zero to five, we're giving it the stopping point. The stopping point is the fifth character, and the, yeah. well, the sixth character really yeah. of the string. So it's not going to print that. Yeah, so okay. It's, it's so if I want that six character, if I want that six character to print, I actually would have to type zero colon oops my fault zero colon six right, and then it would include that next character. Okay, so that's called slicing. Okay, I think I called it splicing. It kind of means the same thing. Okay, um, but yeah, that would be a slice. We also can shorten that a little bit. We can do the same thing if we just do this. We can get the same same result. Instead of typing zero to five, if I want it to sort of default by starting at the, at the beginning, I can just give it an endpoint, okay? So I can do that too, all right? I wonder if it would work the other way. What if I do this? Yes, it would, okay? So you can, so yeah, tool is the best, right, yeah. So I also could do the same thing. I can sort of say here, start here, but go through the end of the string, right? So if I put that colon there without a number after it, you're, we're telling it to return the rest of it, right? What if, and I bet you can catch this, right? What if I only want, okay, let's see if you, I'm gonna let you guys play with this a little bit and I'll pause recording so you can play with it. Um, and uh, the rest of you watching on YouTube land will just have to, you know, pause yourselves, okay? Um, I want you to find out what input, what would I have to put, type in to get only the word the to print, okay? Only the word the to print. Okay, so what is the output that's what is the input that's going to provide just the word the? Kevin? 13 colon 17. So if I type slogan then bracket 13 colon 17, I get the. But there's a space after it. So if I really want to make it so it's just the word the, not including the space, what would I have to change it? Just type it to 16, right. Okay. And that's good. Okay. All right, all that's left to introduce to you, uh, other than you know being able to slice together, you also can uh, split up and add on other, other elements. So for example, if, let's say I wanted to change the slogan to my school is awesome, instead of saying my school is the best. But I wanna do it in a weirder way. In other words, I could just reassign it. Yeah, I know that, but you know, if we wanna, illustrate what we can do with the with the um, with the slicing mechanisms we can do it this way we can type slogan right and I can say I want to go through let's see if I want to stop at is right if I want to stop at is and end it right there that's going to be 3 9 10 11 12 right so I want to go up to 13 uh, up to 12 excuse me okay and then I'm going to add on I think this is gonna, I think I do want that space actually. I do want the space. So I'm gonna do 13. Yep, okay, so I changed it. So now look what I did. I took the first 13 characters out of slogan and then added on the word awesome, okay? The official definition for this, by the way, this is a concatenation, which we talked about last marking period, okay? You can take, it doesn't have to be, like you could have your own sort of string added in there. You can also combine two strings, right? Uh, by doing 
a quick little addition thing, right? So I can make two strings into one by concatenating them, okay? Another function that you will need is the len function, okay? The len function returns the number of elements in an iterable, in iterable, okay? In other words, it does not work for integers, it does not work for floats, because those are not iterables, those have values, okay? However, strings, since we can iterate through a string, we can count how many characters are in there, right? So if I did the len of slogan, I get 21, okay? Because there's 21 characters, right in, okay? So I can, so, so the len function can also help you, and that's also going to help you, again, when you, when you get to writing loops, because those loops are going to be iterated through a string, you can do it through the length of the string, as an example. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you also, as I mentioned before, can use the in function, okay? So for example, I can take that slogan and I can look for a sequence of characters, okay? For example, is cool in slogan, true or false? What do you think? Is cool in slogan? No. False. False. Okay? It's not. Because that sequence is not there. Okay? However, if I type, let's say, ool in slogan, is that there? Yes, that is there. Okay? So in other words, it would look for specific sequences in, the, in there, right? So if it starts with an O, then an O, then an L, and it finds that, it's going to find that in school, right? So. So you also can use that within strings as well. Okay, so that concludes the, uh, this introduction to new functions in, uh, in 135, and uh, that's it.